In this video, I'm going to talk about pivoting of a matrix. Pivoting of a matrix is a useful technique, commonly used in Gauss Jordan elimination and the simplex method of linear programming. Pivoting is a process to transform a matrix into another one. Because we are transforming matrices, these two matrices are different. Therefore, we should use an arrow in between them instead of an equal sign. In pivoting, there is always one entry called the pivot entry, often denoted by a star or an asterisk. The row that the pivot entry lies in is called the pivot row. And the column that the pivot entry lies in is called the pivot column. The objective of pivoting is to turn the pivot entry into a 1 and turn every other entry in that pivot column into zeros. About the choice of a pivot entry, basically, any entry in the matrix can be chosen as the pivot entry, except one restriction. The restriction is that the pivot entry must be non-zero. In other words, if this 4 were a 5 or negative 2, then we can still pivot at it. But if this were a 0, then we cannot. There are two major steps in pivoting. First, multiply the reciprocal of the pivot entry to the pivot row. Let's take a look at the following example. 1, 2, 0, 5, 0, negative 4, 2, 4. We can pivot at any entry in this matrix except these two zeros. Let's say I want to pivot at this 2. According to this rule, what I should do is to multiply 1 half because 1 half is the reciprocal of the pivot entry to the row that I'm pivoting at, which is row 1, denoted by R1. In this operation, the second row is not changed. Therefore, I'm going to copy entry by entry without any change. As for the first row, 1 half is going to be multiplied to every single entry in R1. So the first entry is 1 half, because 1 half times 1 is 1 half. Next, 1 half times 2 is 1. 1 half times 0 is 0. And 1 half times 5 is 5 over 2. This concludes the first step. Notice that by multiplying the reciprocal of the pivot entry to the pivot row, we are guaranteed to turn this pivot entry into a 1, which is part of our objective. The second step of pivoting is to add or subtract rows. This is slightly more complicated, but it's not that bad. Let us continue with this matrix. We are still pivoting at the 1 in the first row. Recall that the other part of the objective is to turn every other entry in the pivot column into a 0. In other words, we want to turn this negative 4 into a 0. Because this negative 4 is in the second row, we are going to put down R2 at the beginning here. Next, we always put down whichever the pivot row is at the end, which is currently R1. How can we turn negative 4 into a 0? The easiest way is to add 4 to it, 
So I'm going to put down plus four times in the middle. What does this mean? Plus four times R1 means that we are going to change R2 by adding four copies of R1. Because that is a little bit hard, we are going to write down an auxiliary row down here to help ourselves. Four times of R1 means four times of one half, which is two, four times of one, which is four, four times of zero is zero, four times of five halves is ten. And this auxiliary row will be added to R2 to complete this operation. So in the new R2, we are going to have 2 plus 0, which is 2, 4 plus negative 4, which is 0, 0 plus 2 is 2, and 10 plus 4 is 14. How about the first row? The first row is not changed according to this rule because R2 is the only changing row. Therefore, all we need to do is to copy entry by entry. At this point, we are done with our pivoting for this matrix because we have achieved our objective. The pivot entry turns into a 1, and every other entry in this pivot column turns into a 0. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, and we will learn more fun math together. If you would like to see more examples about pivoting, please click on the link at the top right corner. Thank you very much for watching.